Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Clark. Some of you may remember me from KC Research, used to be there. Now I'm with Mike Maloney at goldsilver.com. I'm also on the advisory board at SWP in beautiful Grand Cayman. So the title of my talk, Add a Zero to Your Net Worth, The Coming Super Bubble in Gold and Gold Stocks. So I really believe that gold and gold stocks are gonna give us a tenfold return. There are a number of reasons why I think this is gonna happen. Gold and silver would need to go into a bubble. This is why I think they will go into a bubble at some point. We have numerous asset bubbles. Most asset, major asset classes are in a bubble right now. I don't believe that's gonna last. The US dollar is due for a bear market. US dollar bear markets last for a long time. I'll show you that. Debt and derivatives are at an extreme level. <clears throat> monetary expansion fallout. We've had a lot of QE, but w throughout history, what we've not had is an unwinding of QE. This is an experiment. The risk is very high. Inflation could potentially shoot higher. Uh, a recession or other deflationary event. This is the third longest economic expansion in U.S. history. There are numerous black swans swimming around out there. I'll go over those in detail. New supply for both metals is peaking. It's rolling over. It's going to decline for the next 10 years. The bottom line is there are numerous catalysts, both inside and outside the gold market, that could cause a, a, any kind of panic into gold and silver. Let's talk about the everything bubble, a term that Mike Maloney coined. First is stocks. You'll see that uh, stocks have been this expensive, only 9% this often throughout history. This is the CAPE ratio. This is the second longest bull market in the S&P in U.S. history. You can see what happened the other times in the red what happened is that they crashed. Our, the third uh, red circle to the right is where we are today. Bonds are in a major bull market. They've been going for 35 years. The bond market, the problem there is it's twice as big as the stock market. If that reverses and collapses for any reason or even declines, that's going to have major repercussions. People will go into gold. The real estate bubble, the realtor told me that uh, this is different than 2008, what it might be except home prices are now 7% above the 2006 bubble level, the average U.S. home price. Marijuana stocks, not a lot of people know this, but the uh, licensed producer composite index, since its inception, when Tweed, uh, which is now Canopy, first went public, to the December high for this uh, index, the rise was 4,500%, 4,500% rise in that group of stocks in an index. Imagine the GDX going up that high. Bitcoin, um, look, the technology for Bitcoin is going to uh, evolve and develop. There's going to be many uh, <clears throat> cryptos that do well, but I'll call your attention to the the text in the middle of the chart, the price of Bitcoin rose a total of 14.7 million percent since inception. That is not a misprint. The price of Bitcoin since inception to its peak in December rose a total of 14.7 million percent. It's not just those things, it's almost everything. Muscle cars, believe it or not, are 50 percent more expensive now than they were in 2009. Artwork. There are many examples of artwork that are, uh, have gone up at, uh, tremendously in value. The most expensive painting in the world was sold last year, almost half a billion dollars for just one painting. Not a lot of people know this, but the U.S. government borrowed more money in Q1 of this year than any other quarter in its history. Corporate credit is uh, in a bubble. Global credit is in a bubble. Student loans, all-time high. Auto loan debt, all-time high. Healthcare costs, all-time high. Unfunded liabilities, we could go on and on about that, whether it's Social Security, Medicare, pensions, whatever. The U.S. national debt I just mentioned is the bar on the left. Global credit I mentioned is the bar in the middle. What's the bar on the right? What comes after trillion? The amount of derivatives going around the system right now at the end of last month was... There we go. <laughs> was 1.2 quadrillion. That is a bubble sitting on a pin. If anything happens in the derivative market, gold and silver are going to soar. And next slide. There we go. The U.S. government itself projects that debt is going to rise. 
And they're always conservative. There's no way around this. The debt cannot be mathematically repaid. Why is debt so important? Because history shows this comprehensive study shows that the more debt a country has, the more financial shocks that country experiences. We have a higher uh, debt ratio, the second highest in the U.S. right now, uh, based on GDP. That means that we get more financial shocks than we've ever had before. Realtor told me that real estate uh, market is not what it used to be. It's not like the bubble it was in 2006. I understand, but margin, leverage, and subprime, subprime loans put that into one index reading. That's the red line. All of those things put together are higher now than they were in 2006. Anything happens to that market, gold and silver would do well. The dollar is due for a downtrend. I don't know if you can see the shaded areas, but the first shaded area in the left there, the dollar fell for 12 and a half years. Gold rose over 1,400%. The middle shaded area, the dollar was in a bear market for over 10 years. Gold rose 22%. The third shaded area on the right, the dollar fell over 10 and a half years. Gold rose for 407%. I think the dollar is due for another bear market. If, it, if that happens, gold and silver are going to do very well. Inflation is also a threat. A lot of people think the worst inflation we've ever had was in the 1970s. That is actually not correct. These are examples from, the, from U.S. history where there's been huge spikes in inflation in just two years. The one on the left, in 1915, the inflation rate was 1%. One, 1%. Two years later, the inflation rate was 17%. In 1945, inflation was 2%. Two years later, it was 14%. And then, yes, in the 1970s, 3% to 11%. Let's apply those rises in inflation in just two years to our current situation. The small bar on the left is our current inflation rate. If we matched any of those periods, there's what inflation would be two years from now if it took off now. Anywhere from 40% to 16% to 8%. The problem is many people have not experienced high inflation in their lifetimes. This will be a traumatic event for many people. And of course, all the catalysts I mentioned, black swans end up being the catalyst half the time, right? There's many black, cat, uh, black swans out there. One of the catalysts I, that I think it could be is Deutsche Bank is carrying $64 trillion in derivatives right now, the most in the world. One bank in one country has 16 times more in derivatives than the entire country's GDP. That's a bubble sitting on a pin. If foreigners stop or, stop or uh, uh, slow their buying of U.S. debt, they've actually been trending down, buying less for several years now. If a country defaults on its debt, that would be very easy. There's a lot of debt in many countries right now. Within the gold industry itself, there could be catalysts. It was underreported, but both Turkey and Hungary moved their gold out of the U.S. to themselves. They're aggressively buying gold and they're storing their gold in their own country now. Mine supply for both metals is going to fall. The bottom line, there's many catalysts that cause, could cause a panic into gold and silver. What if they all happen simultaneously? That's a little bit of an exaggeration, Jeff, right? No, it's not. This is what happened in the 1970s. Two recessions, a 13.5% inflation rate, 18% interest rates, a U.S. dollar is in a major bear market, 8% unemployment, Cold War tensions, energy crisis, including an oil embargo. How many of you remember having to wait in line to fill your gas tank? I did. Russia invaded Afghanistan. All that happened in one decade. How did gold and silver do? If you invested $100 in gold in 1970, you ended up with $2,328 if you sold at the top. Silver, over $3,100. You couldn't buy gold in 1970, so let's say you only got the second half of that bull market and you invested in gold in 1976. Silver would have returned you almost a 12-fold return, gold over a 7-fold return. Let's talk about gold stocks. Many of them have been in in bubbles. This is research that we've done up over, uh, dug up over the years while it was at Casey Research and since. These are examples of gold stocks that have absolutely soared in the right conditions. I believe those conditions are going to come again. These are examples of actual producers. We had to go back and dig up uh, old uh, newspaper clippings to find these actual prices. But in 18 months, these are producers during the 1979-1980, just during an 18-month period of time. The average was 289%. How did the juniors do in the 1979-1980 mania? 18-month period, the average junior that we were able to dig up rose over 2,300%. Not a lot of people know there was a rally in gold stocks. Uh, after the crash in gold in 1980-1981, there was actually a rally around the Hemlo discovery area here in Canada. So for that two-year period, these are how the producers did. Not too bad. How did the juniors do? The juniors 
related to that specific discovery, even though the gold price was flat, rose over 4,000% on average. In the mid-1990s, the 1990s was called the nuclear winter by miners because they couldn't make any money because gold and silver weren't doing very well. But there was a mini rally in gold and gold stocks in that period. If you caught that period, uh, you can see the the producers themselves rose over 200%. Here's a list we dug up of of juniors from the mid-1990s. You can see the average was over 3,800%. It is skewed a little bit by Cardaway at the top. Yes, it did in fact rise 26,000%. I do believe there's another card away out there coming. If you think deflation is coming, I don't necessarily disagree with you. Here's how the uh, producers did during the Great Depression. They rose four and five times um, in value while there were soup lines and uh, bank runs. So why would gold stocks go into a bubble if... First of all, would be if the gold price does. And the equity market itself does not need to do well. This is uh, the S&P versus gold stocks during the 1970s. The black line is the S&P. It rose a whopping 11% over a 10-year period. But gold stocks, Barron's Gold Mining Index, you can see soared during that time. If the gold price goes up, gold stocks are going to follow. I think there will be leader rotation. This is Barrick's output over the past 16 years. You can see their output has continued to drop. They're not going to be the leader in the next bull market. There's going to be other companies that rotate into that. We want to catch those companies now that are going to become the leaders. Gold stocks are undervalued. This is the GDX. It's one third, it's 2011 high. You can see the bump there on the right in early 2016. In one quarter, the GDX tripled in value. That little bump on the right is a triple in value. You can see just how undervalued and how much rise there could be in them. The gold industry, as I think many in this audience know, is very tiny. The gold bar is the top 50 mining companies in the world. Only one third of those are gold stocks. The next bar over, the first gray bar beside it, is Apple Computer. So one third of that gold bar is gold stocks. If the public gets, puts their teeth into gold and gold stocks, the amount of money coming into the sector could really make these things scream. Okay, let's get into my picks real quick. This is uh, gold mining. There's the symbol right there. The reason I like them is because they've been uh, a quiet acquirer is how I've been uh, uh, phrased them. They've made seven acquisitions in five years, all at the bottom of the cycle. When do you make your money in bull or bear markets? You make your money in bear markets. You buy when things are cheap. That's exactly what they've been doing. They've been buying on the cheap. They made seven acquisitions in five years. What does that do for them? They're the second bar there on the left. They have the second largest asset base now in all of the Americas among explorers and developers. There's going to be a re-rating that's going to come for this company. It is deeply undervalued, the stock. Uh, uh, The gold bars at the bottom there you'll see. Against any other category by any other analyst or firm, they are dramatically undervalued uh, by the average. This stock you can buy for a dollar and a change. Do I think it's going to go to $10? Yes, I do. My next pick is Equinox Gold. There's the uh, symbols there. If there's one kind of gold company that I could buy, it would be the pre-producer. The company that has already found something, they've gone through feasibility, and they've declared, a, they've made a construction decision, we're going to build a mine and we're going to uh, produce gold. When you buy at that point until they uh, actually pour metal, that's a very lucrative time to buy metal or excuse me, to buy the stock. Uh, uh, Many of them tend to go up during that period. That's exactly the position Equinox is is in. They will be in production by the end of the year. Their growth is locked in. They're well diversified. They have low political risk and they're chaired by Ross Beatty. Ross Beatty has been buying this stock on the open market. So we can buy it about the same price that he's been buying. The thing I like about them is they're probably going to have multiple re-ratings. When you go from an explorer to a developer, that's a re-rating. You command a higher stock price because your company is worth more. When you go from a developer to a small producer, same thing, a re-rating. Equinox is going to have multiple re-ratings coming up. They're going to go from explorer to developer, re-rating. From a developer to a small producer, re-rating. From a small producer to a mid-tier, probably within two to three years, re-rating. That's very attractive. I'm buying the stock now. 
The one, I'm gonna ha I have a silver pick, and there's one thing about silver that I think is, is probably underreported, and that is just how small the industry is. I think we all know that industry is small, but here's just how small. The S&P is the bar on the right. That's the market cap of the S&P 500. The next is the Dow. The next is the NASDAQ. The small, teeny tiny bar you can barely see is the market cap of the primary silver producer industry. The thing is, there's only six of them. There's only six of them that are considered primary silver producers. Pan American Silver gets more than 50% of its revenue from other metals besides silver. They're actually not a primary silver producer. I like the company, not a bad stock, but they're not a primary silver producer. My point is when the, when the public gets their teeth into silver and wants to buy a pure silver producer and have pure silver exposure, there's not that many of these stocks. There's gonna be money pouring into this sector. These stocks are gonna scream in my opinion. Here's my uh, silver pick, silver crest. There's the symbol there. This comes from Louis James at internationalspeculator.com. Many of you may remember, I worked with him at Casey Research. He's now on his own, if you don't know, internationalspeculator.com. There's his website, so check it out. Um, I can vouch for him. I worked, I was his right-hand man for many years, so I, I can personally vouch for him. Uh, Silvercrest has a, a deposit at, in Sonora there that has bonanza grade, um, has bonanza grades. Uh, just developing one portion of that discovery is a mine in and of itself. Just developing the entire region that they already have discovery of, we believe could make this stock a five bagger. If they find another La Chisba down there, this could be a 10 bagger very easily. It's also a takeover candidate. There are two majors down there that may want this uh, deposit. I actually hope it's not taken over too soon because I'd like to get that five, five bagger in there. There is lots of appetite from investors for this. Both Louie and I are invested, so full disclosure, I do own all three of these stocks that I've given you. However, you can buy most of them at, at the same price about what we did. There's their properties. Uh, that's La Chispa circled there. The white are their properties. You can see, however, this is a very rich area for silver. There's lots and lots of potential in this area. Uh, this stock could really go if they find more than what they have already found. In my opinion, you do need to own gold for the kind of things that are coming up. I do believe there's going to be a series of crises. It's going to be important not just to own gold stocks, but to own gold. It's going to happen. It's, it's a when question, not an if question. It's the ultimate risk dampener. The worse the crisis, the more important it'll be to own gold. Remember, bubbles always overshoot. If gold and silver go into a bubble, not only will they overshoot, but the stocks uh, uh, that underline them will overshoot as well. Many Bitcoin millionaires disagree. This is an internal document from goldsilver.com. This is the monthly Bitcoin to bullion orders. These are the people that have made money in Bitcoin and have decided to buy gold with it. You can see what happened. This is for 2017. The amount of people buying gold from uh, their Bitcoin has shot up. So even Bitcoin believers know that they need to own some gold and silver. Uh, we have a new website. I hope encourage you to check it out at goldsilver.com. Uh, Mike Maloney and I are currently writing a book. It'll be out this fall, so look for that. And I think I'm out of time, so I will stay in the back if anybody has any questions. Okay, thank you very much.